In this video, I'm going to walk through how I made a gripper for my 5 degree of freedom robotic arm. The grippers comprised mainly of two different machined parts. There's the gripper block and the four identical fingers that fit into it. I did attach a little plate at the bottom afterwards to help force the worm gear to stay in place. All of the other parts are off the shelf from McMastercar.com and ServoCity.com. So to start off with the block, I have a piece of aluminum around 2.5 by 2.5 by 1 inch thick in size. Using a quarter inch carbide end mill, I'm first going to face the bottom and then clean up the sides going down in two 10 millimeter steps. After that, I remove the material between the four protrusions again in two steps using an adaptive clearing strategy. I'm cutting both ways to save time on movement, which means I'm cutting both conventionally and climb, taking a 0.6mm climb and a slightly smaller 0.5mm going conventional. If you don't know what those two terms are, they basically indicate whether the end mill is pulling itself along as it cuts, which is generally better for the machine and the finish, or pushing against the material as it cuts. There are a lot of better explanations all over YouTube on this topic, so I won't go into detail here. Now flipping over to the top side, I've switched out to a 4mm end mill. On this side we're facing and then boring out the clearance and tap holes, and then finishing up by cleaning up the remaining material at the sides. Now that that's all done, we can flip to the side and machine the countersink and clearance hole for a shoulder bolt. Right here I'm just doing a little plunge so that I can go and drill the hole later on on the drill press since I don't want to go to the full depth of this end mill and risk welding it in the part. It's never a good idea to plunge an end mill straight down, especially not these cheap Chinese no-name ones. I did one extra part off camera, and that's a plate to retain the worm gear during operation. If you think about it, when the gripper closes onto an object and squeezes, it's essentially trying to pop the worm gear straight off the motor shaft, which is bad for the set screw, and bad for the bearings in the motor gearbox. 
This little retainer plate here will prevent that and required four M4 screws threading into the bottom of the gripper. So back on the machine, I'm using a 2mm end mill to borrow the 3.3mm M4 tap size holes. Now for the four identical fingers, I'm machining them all out of a single quarter inch bar of extrusion. For each finger there are five board holes in the part and then the entire thing is contoured out. I didn't get all of it on camera unfortunately. For this job it makes a lot more sense to use a blue tape trick to hold the material down. This way I can cut out the cart completely without needing tabs. The other advantage is as you remove material from the middle, you don't risk a vise collapsing the part and coming loose. And my vise isn't big enough for this entire piece anyways. Now with a super glue and tape trick, it can be a little challenging to remove your parts afterwards. You don't want to scratch it if you use some kind of metal wedge, and you don't want to bend the parts if they're too thin. Here is the cleaned up piece with all the little holes tapped to M4. Sometimes if you don't measure your part thickness correctly, you get a tiny layer of material holding on, or in this case it pushed a little material below the bottom surface, so maybe that's a sign my end mill is already getting dull. Not really a problem since it's so thin everything just pops out by hand. I do need to go deburr the edges though. And here is the finished parts. Assembling them is a bit tricky since you have to make sure all the fingers go in at the right tooth so that they close at the same time. Here's the finished gripper attached to the arm. It works great. The higher the voltage I give it, the stronger the force it has when it closes, as well as the faster it moves. I also had to machine a little plate and two rings to connect the block to the servos, so I quickly whipped those out on the machine. So, hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something new. Remember to share and check out our other videos for more projects. Three, two, one, go.